Hi, everybody. Today is Tuesday, October 12th, 2023. I am man excited for postseason baseball. And today I thought I would do a bit of a show and tell about how uh, you can send email using an Elixir application, uh, referencing some recent work that I've done with uh, Study Hall. So, um, so first off, uh, I'll talk a little bit about Swoosh. Uh, Swoosh is a library that is included with Phoenix by default. And it will help you uh, send email. Um, it works pretty. Uh, so a lot of this, if you create a you know Phoenix Live View or Phoenix application or a Phoenix Live View application, um, you know you will see a lot of this in the default install. But basically, uh, just to walk through this a little bit, you basically will configure uh, your application. Uh, you will say uh, configure you know mailer with a swoosh adapter and the adapter basically is the thing that connects swoosh to a real live uh mail sending vendor endpoint and you can see swoosh includes uh, adapters for lots of popular um email vendors uh we will be talking specifically about postmark today because that's the one that i'm using but uh you can figure it with the adapter and like an api key if needed then uh, you have to define your mailer so for that we'll just basically create a module call it your app.mailer and then say use swoosh mailer so it fills in all the default like mailer requirements uh with uh, sharing your otp app name specifically then uh when you want to send an email you will create a swoosh.email you know struct value and uh, this is kind of a sample demo of how that could look assuming you wanted to create a, like a welcome email you create the email with new that's get that gets imported through the swoosh.email module and then you just assign a to from subject HTML body, text body, and then you've got your mail. Um, to send it, uh, basically you just construct uh, your email val var you know, value, and then you tell your mailer to deliver it, and it will send it off to Postmark or Mailgun or Sand Grid or whatever you want. Um, and yeah, and that's basically how it works. Um, the other one I'll mention specifically uh, before I get too deep into the Swoosh details is Bamboo. That's a kind of an alternative uh, mail client before Phoenix picked Swoosh as a default. Basically, your choices were Swoosh or Bamboo. Bamboo is still out there. Uh, it's definitely something you could consider. Um, I'm pretty happy with Swoosh, so I'll continue to use it. Um, now, talking specifically about vendors. So while technically you could run your own email server uh there's so much complexity involved in that that i don't think i'd recommend it <laughs> um i think you would use a vendor um postmark specifically is a vendor that i've been you know very satisfied with uh, i've used them for some personal projects and i've got you know some philly ties to them considering they used to be owned by a philadelphia based company um and i had some you know friends who worked there so i know they i you know knew about the product and knew how it worked and uh, yeah, but I'm very, you know, positive towards Postmark. They're particularly good for their documentation. So, like, uh, from their, like, homepage, you can check out the resources. And not only do they have documentation, like, about their, you know, service, they also have great, like, vendor-neutral documentation on how email actually works. And even some special services for, like, uh, DMARC Digest, which is, like, an email, you know, uh, technology that's related to like you know security and identity um you know all things that might come up if you continue to send like lots and lots of email um now in the topic of email there is also the consideration of um transaction versus broadcast so uh this is my current like study hall um dashboard in post uh postmark um, you can see it defaults with a couple streams. It's got a broadcast stream, an inbound stream, and a transactional stream. So transactional emails are emails that are related to like timely events, things that you have to get the email to the user very quickly, things like authentication um, or any kind of like account verification, you know, redirect type, you know, system. Broadcast is more for just general content that is you know, not as timely and can be delivered in, in a more relaxed, you know, tone. Um, you have to decide, you know, which one you want to use because if you do, do transactional email, like it will be um, vetted a little bit more 
that you're like following the rules there because like there's a lot of like people who will uh <laughs> bad actors in the email system but um you know self-identify you know the emails you're sending as a broadcast or as a transaction and then just make sure you uh, you know send it to the appropriate stream um within postmark uh inbound stream is for accepting email so you could create uh, an email account where like you want people to you know forward an email and then like your system would pick it up and process it and do something interesting with it um that's available too uh so historically postmark only did transactional email and then back in like the early 2020 they added um broadcast email and in fact uh looking back at my blog um I actually worked on updating swoosh to handle <laughs> the broadcast email streams for postmark um and I'll put a link in the description if you want to check that out but basically I did some PRs to swoosh to kind of make sure that I could use the uh the newer endpoints that postmark had made available to that um but now you know postmark does both broadcast and transactional um today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the transactional ones that I set up so like I created a uh within um study hall I created a simple um GraphQL endpoint where people can post a message and then I just send the email. And this is all like work that I did in advance to um, sending emails for accounts, which is coming up. So when you send email, um, of course you can yourself construct the full like HTML body that'll get sent to the user. But you know, email is a particularly finicky technology, particularly like HTML email. And so, um, one of the things you can get through Postmark is a set of layouts and templates that have been, you know, pre-built to work well across the wide spectrum of email clients out there. And so I really like using them. Um, you can see like the basic way it works out is like you can create layouts, you can create multiple ones, um, and then you can create multiple templates. And then the way this works is like when I am, um, sending the the code now this is demoing with a curl but uh when i'm sending the email to postmark from my elixir app basically i will assign like a template alias name and then i will fill in like product url product name inside the body of the email so that way it'll be populated on the postmark side and you know rendered and then delivered appropriately so there's a little bit of like De like coupling between like the templates in Postmark and my assumptions in the Elixir code. Um, I have some thoughts about how I might try to solve that in the future, but for now uh, I'm handcrafting templates and layouts within Postmark web app. And then I've referenced them uh, in my Elixir code. So um, let me just run through and show you what the PR looks like. It's pretty basic. Uh, starts with just adding Postmark API to an example uh, environment variable. <laughs> so whenever we want to configure the app uh, during the runtime to use Postmark, we'll look for an environment variable called Postmark API key. And then um, inside of runtime EXS, we basically say, hey, if we can see a Postmark API key in the environment, then we will configure our mailer to use the postmark adapter and then to, you know, use the API key from the environment variable. Um, we also configure a swoosh API client to use uh, hacking, although you can configure that to uh, Finch, I believe is the other one. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, other parts of this email um, PR is uh, some documentation on how we send email. So like if I'm going through the process of, configuring postmark and swoosh uh you know i want to document what i'm doing and links to you know appropriate places um the demo message is just the you know sample email so we pull in a swoosh email except new um and that's because i'm going to call the function new so you can basically say demo message dot new and pass in the string uh but it'll create that initial value and then just pipe in all of the different configurations for this email uh, which for now is just hard coded to me and you know as a from and a to and then i've got the postmark specific like template aliases and template models which is going to include uh the different 
uh, strings that will be used when the you know template is rendered. Uh, other than that, uh, we've got our mailer, which was built by uh, Phoenix by default. I just added a little bit of a module doc here. And then I set up uh, the GraphQL part. So in GraphQL land, you define a schema. Uh, so basically, I have inside my mutations list, I have an email Zorn mutation that accepts a message and then gets resolved with this function called email Zorn. Uh, you can see up here the resolvers.email. This accepts uh, three arguments relative to GraphQL, the middle one being the uh, sections of the argument list that came in through GraphQL. And then I just I create my demo message uh, mail value. And then I pass it to study hall mailer dot deliver. And then if it works, I send back an email sent. If it fails for some reason, I send back the reason. Um, and I do in this current implementation, I do expose the reason to the GraphQL endpoint, which is probably a bad idea in production, but this PR is mostly just to get some foundational stuff working. Um, and then of course we've got uh, some mix EXS uh, things. And that was about it. Um, oh, and then the tests. So with Swoosh, you do get some special email test assertions. So in this test, I'm validating that you can pass uh, this mutation document to the GraphQL endpoint, uh, and it'll process successfully, and it'll send back the message email sent. And uh, we will assert email sent, which is a, an assertion added by Swoosh. Um, That'll make it uh, check out. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a quick overview for, like, how you can send email through an LXR app with Swoosh and some considerations you should, you know, have with regard to, tra you know, transactional versus broadcast and, you know, a real-world uh, implementation that you can reference in the future if you are so interested. Um, one other thing I have in my notes I want to share um, so like one of my concerns is that like I've got these templates and layouts that are that live in the postmark web experience. Um, I think I, in time it might be interesting to kind of like take the contents of these templates uh, and and source them in the repo and then maybe just like have a thing where you can edit the template in you know a code file and then like mix push templates to postmark or something. Um, not something I'm going to do right away because it's pretty low priority, but it is something I, I'm interested in. Um, Postmark has, uh, you know, an API to let you do things like that. So um, let me just see if I can show you uh, what that looks like. So like, yeah, like this is their, this is their documentation for their email, and you can see they've got a whole collection of uh, API endpoints where you can, you know, get templates and push templates, and so it's definitely possible to uh, kind of do what I'm thinking about, but probably not going to do it right away. Um, kind of nice to have, but yeah. So yeah, that was kind of an overview of how to send email uh, with Elixir in an Elixir typical Elixir app simulation situation. But yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or feedback, please do let me know. Other than that, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.